Hi, Russ of Aquarimax here, and today we're going to continue the isopod macro lens tour with the genus Porcelio. Let's start with Porcelio scaber or scaber. The term Porcelio refers to a small pig, and scaber or scaber means rough. And let's see if we can get a close look at these bumps on their carapace that give this species its name. And here they are. Now this species was one of the first species in the hobby. They were keeping the orange morph of this species with dart frogs years and years ago. And we're going to look at several morphs today, but here is a nice close look at the wild type. I've had a few really strange individuals show up in my wild type cultures lately. This one is a representative of what may be the koi trait that arose spontaneously in my wild cultures, and it may be a different trait. At any rate, I found several with unpigmented patches like this, so I'm going to try to isolate it and see what I get. And here is one of the oldest color morphs in the hobby, if not the oldest color morph in the hobby. This is Porcelio scabra orange. It was once widely known as giant orange or Spanish orange, but since we have much larger isopods in the hobby now, and uh, we also have many isopods that are Spanish in origin in the hobby now, these are usually just called Porcelio scabra orange. They're a classic isopod, pretty easy to take care of. Pretty good beginner isopod, tolerant of low ventilation, and basically just all around uh, a fun isopod to have really nice coloration. And as you can see, there's some variety in the color. This blue background really helps the orange coloration pop, but these isopods are so active that it's hard to get a good shot of them. They seem prone to want to climb out of the container, but Fortunately, this one's sitting still for us for a second. Oh, well, that was short-lived. And this color morph is a classic mainstay of the isopod hobby, and with good reason. And here is another fairly uh, recognized, long-established morph in the hobby. This is Porcelio scabra calico. There are various calico morphs in the hobby now, but uh, this particular one is sex-linked. Um, only the females express the, the color and uh, the males are wild types. So as you can see, there is a lot of variety in the coloration. Some of them look just like the orange morph and others look just like the wild type. And then there are many that look like a mix between the two and some that are other color varieties as well. So this is a fun morph because of all the variety and they really look very interesting under a macro lens. As you can see, there's a lot of detail in that pattern that just can't be appreciated unless you can see it up close. Let's take a look at this one as well, if we can get a good shot of it. That modeling is just pretty fantastic. The challenge is just keeping them still. But you can see the, the variation in intensity and the amount of color the amount of modeling in each individual. This one's a lot lighter than the other two that I selected at random. Very interesting pattern and color. It's unfortunate that it's not easier to get them to stay still. This one is the only one obliging. Just holding up the piece of cork bark is sometimes the best way. We'll look at the patterning on this individual here. Oh being obscured. Like I said, there are many, many other calico morphs in the hobby these days. Some that are not sex linked, some that are more yellow, some that are more red. So this is just one example of what calico morph specimens can can look like. Porcelio scaber dalmatian is a fun one. 
You'll notice that here I actually have some orange Dalmatians as well, and we'll talk more about those later. But Dalmatians, of course, get their name from the Dalmatian dog, which is white with black spots. And these have irregular patches. Some of them are heavily marked, as you can see the one right in the middle of the screen has some decent dark coloration on it. And others are much less so, just a little bit of markings. And that seems to be something we've noticed as hobbyists that many of them just end up with just a slight speckling, whereas others are, are highly marked. And it seems to be something that's generational. If you breed Dalmatian to Dalmatian for long enough, they tend to lose the heavy marking. And if you back cross them um, in subsequent generations, you'll get some better coloration, at least for a while. Interesting thing that the way that happens. Let's see if we can get a decent look at this one. You notice that one antenna is almost entirely dark and the other one is entirely light. And then the random speckling. With a couple of good dark patches in the back here. And the rest of it is just very, very small areas of dark pigmentation. It's interesting that it has a dark patch near each eye too. And here is my Porcelio scabra orange Dalmatian colony. You will notice that there are a few of the normal Dalmatians with the uh, dark slate gray or black coloration as well in here, but most of them are the oranges. This uh, morph was originally isolated by Ryan Orr, and shortly after he began his project, I began to do the same thing. So I did cross the um, Dalmatians with oranges. The first generation produced mostly wild types with a few calicos in it, but the subsequent generation produced a lot of oranges. So let's see if we can find some good specimens here uh, to look at under the macro lens. Uh, here's a specimen with some nice markings, fairly evenly distributed along the body. A little hard to focus there. Here's another one with some nice orange patches. And this one, they're mostly in the back, but still not bad. Here's one with some nice orange on the antenna and the back. There's another one too. Quite a few good ones in here, and here's some normal Dalmatians that are still in the culture. I've still been culling out those. It'll be a while before I get a pure orange Dalmatian culture, but there are a lot of nice specimens in here with pretty good color. And it was just fun to actually produce some of these by crossing the Dalmatian and the uh, orange. And of course, later on, I added some from the stock produced by Ryan Orr so that I could get a better genetic diversity in my group. So this colony contains individuals descended from both lines. Oh, I love that, the Europods, that area there, all orange. A byproduct of all this uh, morph making is that we get populations like this. This is called party mix. And as you can see, there are calicos in here, wild types, Dalmatians, oranges. There are orange Dalmatians, all kinds of things in here. And the visual impact of a group of these, it's kind of hard to beat as far as Porcelio Scabra goes, in my opinion. It's a lot of fun. So I believe that's why people call it the party mix a lot of the time. Sometimes also called lottery mix. But some really, really fun isopods in there. Sometimes you get... Uh, stock that has ghost or koi or different things in it, as well as the, the ones that I mentioned previously. And these are all uh, basically culls from the stock that I used to produce orange Dalmatians, as well as the odd uh, individual from some of my other colonies that gets put in here occasionally. Pretty cool. As you can see, a lot of the Dalmatians are pretty well marked in here, probably as a result of the genetic diversity in this colony. 
that one looks like it might be a calico Dalmatian right there. Just as a, an example of what you sometimes get when you do these mixes. And of course they're all the same species, so there's no concerns about causing hybrid species here. This is all Porcelia scaber. This species is a swift burrower. It's going to be a little bit hard to catch these on camera, I think, uh, because they're such good hiders. This is Porcelio dilatatus, or the uh, giant canyon isopod. They are called dilatatus. The, the term dilatatus means like enlarged or widened, related to the word dilated, because they're much more stocky or wider than Porcelio scaber, for example. And they get quite a bit larger. This is not by any means an, a mature individual. They can approach approximately one inch in size. I'm not sure if I have any specimens of that size in this particular container. These are mostly juveniles here. Let's take a look at one under the macro lens. Porcelio dilatatus is very likely to partially curl itself and to remain in this state of tonic immobility for some time. It allows us to get a good look at the underside of an isopod, which is fairly difficult with some of the other species. You can see the mouth parts, 14 legs, and it does have some tubercles that make it look a little like Porcelio scaber, but it's also, as I mentioned, much wider. And you can see these interesting patterns on the back as well, which are not present in all of the Porcelio scaber. And here is Porcelio lavis. Lavis means smooth, and as you can probably see, even without the magnification of the macro lens, they have a much smoother, glossier carapace than Porcelio scaber does. They also get a bit larger, and depending on the color morph, they can get quite a bit larger than Porcelio scaber. In fact, uh, this is one of my favorite species in the genus, and, and we'll look at my favorite morph of this species really soon. I like the oranges a lot. They are fairly prolific. I think they... Uh, the glossiness is really attractive. But they're not quite as prolific or as um, large in size or as active as the next one we're going to look at. This particular color morph is kind of shy in comparison to some of the others and does tend to stay still when disturbed quite a bit more than quite a few of the other isopods we've looked at actually. And here is one of my very favorite isopods of all time, Porcelia levis dairy cow. As you can see already, they're a lot more active than the orange variety of the same species. In fact, there's some question about whether or not they are the same species. I love their patterns, I love their activity, I love their large size, and they're extremely prolific. So pretty hard to beat in my opinion, whether you're a beginner, advanced isopod hobbyist. Unfortunately this is also one of the species that is hardest to film under the macro lens because they are so incredibly active. It's hard to get them to stay still. I'm holding a magnolia pod and trying to get a good view of them on this magnolia pod. They tend to stay more still on a surface that they already were on than if you pick them up and put them into say a deli cup. So this may be our best chance at getting a decent look at some of them. You can see that the pattern on these tends to be more full than it is on the Porcelio scaber Dalmatians. Almost every individual is, is well patterned and that doesn't seem to diminish with the generation. So that's another point in favor of this species. Now, that's not to say that there aren't some individuals that are lightly marked, but in general, these are pretty dependably marked quite heavily and some of them are quite extreme in that regard. One thing I can say with some confidence is that you're not likely to find Dalmatians with this much pattern saturation.
Before we move on to the three giant Spanish Porcelio species that I have, I'd like to take a moment to thank our Patreon backers. All of your support is really appreciated. It helps me do a lot of things on the channel I couldn't otherwise do, and if you'd like to check that out and become part of the Aquarimax Patreon family, I'll put a link in the description, and I'll put an in screen at the end of the video. And now, on to our giant Spanish Porcelio species. Now, this is not the largest species of the giant Spanish Porcelio, but it is one of the most prolific and easiest to care for. Their activity levels are pretty similar to dairy cows, actually. They've got those cool little markings on them that give them their name of Porcelio or not as yellow dot, or yellow spot, or gold dot. I've heard various permutations of the name. But they're a really cool isopod. And Wally Kern of Supreme Gecko is the one who uh, sent me these initially, and he's also the one who uh, kind of let me know how cool they are. So shout out to Wally there. They're really, really prolific. Let's take a peek at what's going on under this log here. We've got lots and lots of them. And almost all of them sport those attractive little yellow dots. And I'm fortunate that this one is staying still, giving us a really nice look at those yellow dots. There are other morphs of this species that are more brightly colored, but from what I understand, not all of those are as active as this one is. Well, this one has even more of those yellow dots. And for whatever reason, the color really seems to pop on those yellow dots. Now, this species, Porcelio hoffmansegei, is known in the hobby as hoffs or titans. And I really like this species a lot. Like most giant Porcelio species, the males and females are really easy to distinguish from one another. The males have longer uropods, the one in the center of the screen right now, is a young male. And the females have much shorter uropods and squatter bodies. And this individual in the middle of the screen is a good representative of a female. Let's see if we can find a larger male, because they get quite impressive. I don't think I have any of full size in here yet, but I have some that are eh, fairly large. This individual is nowhere near the full size that a male can attain, but it's still pretty impressively sized. And the uropods have a decent length to them. This was the first giant Spanish Porcelio species that I ever kept. And they're not a particularly difficult one. Not nearly as prolific as uh, Porcelio or not as Yellow Dot, but still fairly easy to breed and keep. They do require, just like the Porcelio or not as, uh, a lot of dry area that's well ventilated and uh, the they do need a moist spot but that tends to be a small part of their enclosure they really want a lot of well ventilated fairly dry area Porcelio hoffman's egg eye is large enough that you really can't fit the whole thing in the macro lens at once but it's pretty cool you can see it's got quite a rough carapace but at the same time it's pretty glossy this is a female here, as you can see by the uropods. And here is a male. It's a lot more difficult than you might think focusing on this. There's a little soil mite. And you can see the, the uh, white edges on this species, which are really cool. And then you can see the very long uropods. And again, this is not a mature specimen. It's probably sexually mature, but it's not full size. And so it's really hard to get a good view of it because we can't fit the whole thing in the macro lens field of vision. This species here is often considered to be the largest in the hobby. Some people say Porcelia Hoffman's egg eye is bigger. Other people say this is uh, the bigger species, but either way, it is a species to be reckoned with. This is a juvenile. I'll see if I can find an adult in a minute. But again, I don't have any full-size specimens at the moment, even though they are obviously reproducing. They produced these two juveniles. They are pretty magnificent. They're naturally orange, unlike most isopods. This species 
just the wild type coloration is this orange color with the white uh, skirting and the white antennae. Pretty fantastic. And fortunately for the macro lens, this species tends to stay still for a while after it's disturbed. And so we can get a decent look at it. This is a fairly small juvenile. It's several months old. But you still get an idea of what they look like from this specimen. But I'll also find a larger specimen to show you. Now here is a female, probably not full size, but reproductively mature. Sitting on my hand here, you can see the relatively short uropods on this specimen. Looks a lot like an orange Forcelio Hoffman's egg eye, but they're a little wider. I have heard that there are orange Forcelio Hoffman's egg eye out there, but I've never seen one in real life. I gotta say, it does live up to its name. I love how you can see the uh, compound eyes fairly easily in these because they're so big. I dug around in there for a bit and I wasn't able to locate a large male. There are a ton of babies in there, but anyway, pretty magnificent species, I must say. I hope you're enjoying the isopod macro lens tour so far. I'll put an in screen at the end of the video that links to the playlist so you can watch the rest of it. Thanks for watching today. I post videos every Wednesday and Friday all on aquarium and vivarium pets. Please feel free to share, rate, comment, and if you haven't already, subscribe. And then click the bell icon so you don't miss my next video.